Hello again, friends. Welcome back to Synergy's platform focus series, where we discuss the capabilities, products, and modules that make up Synergy's industry-leading enterprise data management solution, the Synergy Knowledge Platform. I'm Kevin Gully, the head of product marketing at Synergy, and today we're going to be talking about master data management. Synergy, as many of you know, was recently included in Gartner's Magic Quadrant on master data management for the first time. That uh, goes along with our inclusion in the data quality and metadata management magic quadrants, meaning we're in three current magic quadrants. And to get into the details of our solution on MDM and how we deliver business value, I'm happy to be joined today by Tyler Warden, Synergy's vice president or senior vice president, actually, of product and one of the architects of our MDM solution. So thanks for jumping on today, Tyler. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Glad to be here. Well, it's great to have you. And as I mentioned, today we're going to be talking MDM or master data management and why Synergy Solution, which is an integrated component of our overall enterprise data management solution, is so well respected in the industry. So, you know, to start, I, I thought I'd mention that, you know, there's often some confusion about exactly what MDM is and how it fits within companies. So I thought I'd start by asking you to provide us with an introduction or an overview or definition of what master data management is from your seat. Yeah, sure. You know, I think if you're watching this video, you either have deep, MDM or master data management expertise, or it's been sent to you to say, hey, go watch this, right? So <laughs> if you're in the latter half, the way I describe master data is the data that shows up as categories on pie charts, typically in your dashboards, or maybe on your X or Y axis, or in drop down lists on things. Uh, it's the data that is that's centrally referenced lots of different places on reports, on transactions, on charts, and I think talking about kind of the big four that we think about, your suppliers, companies you buy from, your products, materials, items, things that you make, sell, distribute, your customers, the companies you sell to, and your key financial objects, right? Your, your cost centers, your profit centers, that sort of thing. And then the fifth, probably your human capital or human resources or your people. So if you can imagine you're looking at a, a, a sales by customer pie chart and you see all these pie charts and you see all the different colors. Well, each one of those colors represents a different customer and master data management is essentially being sure that the, the data that makes up right the colors on that pie chart your customer record that data that's referenced all over the place is trusted and understood. Right? So it's really about high quality trusted data that's so special so central that it's not a generic, but is the master data uh, for your organization. Right, across the entire organization, across all divisions, locations, right. things along those lines. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about the MDM capabilities in the Synergy Knowledge Platform. Um, sure. You know, all of our modules and functions have sub capabilities inside of this. What are the building blocks of our MDM capabilities? And, and talk about a little bit why our customers uh, you know, really appreciate Synergy Solution. Yeah, I think the best way to describe that is the platform capabilities and then the particular workflows on those platform capabilities. So what does it take to have trusted and understood data? We gotta know where it is, what it means, how it got there, what good looks like, uh, and you have to go tell people about it, get them involved in, in processes. So all of those technical feature functions, right? Um, metadata scanning, profiling, uh, workflow, security, validation, deduplication, all of those stuff, all those technical feature functions are all there and those are cool. But really, I think people like the capability of the platform because it meets them where they live and helps them drive a larger journey. MDM implementations and initiatives are just that. They're initiatives as part of a larger data strategy. And sometimes they start small and sometimes they start big. So the platform allows people to start small and grow or take a bigger splash and start big. For example, you may want to start with one domain, maybe just your supplier data and maybe just your supplier data for North America, or maybe just your top 10% of your suppliers. And you don't want a whole lot of change management. You just want to see where the data is coming from, what, goodness level, what badness level, right? How good, clean, healthy, trustworthy it is now. 
uh, and get started there. Or maybe you want to institute a more of a workflow process, not heavy change management, but start to do some more registration. Or maybe you want to go look at all your systems and get you know, some golden records, some single source of the truth together. So by meeting customers where they are and taking all those feature functions that, you know, of course it has, right? And I can dedupe data, it can workflow data, it can validate data, all that stuff. But being able to say, how does that fit into the reality of an implementation with an organization, with a budget, with people, with competing priorities? So being able to have agility and meet people where, where they are. And let me just kind of say this, the way that I think about it is the one key metric that I like to use when evaluating what it's like to implement the Sydney Knowledge Platform for MDM is agility. If you have the perfect spec and your business process never changes, it really doesn't matter what you're going to use because you're going to build it once. The ROI is definitely going to come and it'll be perfect. But because people change, business change, technology change, people get better ideas. The ability to react to those changes and, and improvements and how quickly you go from ideation to implementation, that's really where we try to hone the city knowledge platform to go shorten that time uh, and really make that effective uh, for our customers. Right. Every co company is different. Everybody's got different goals and, and sort of a different place in their journey. So being able to meet them at their where they're at is key. Um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, challenges that companies have that make them realize that they need to implement a master data management solution or that it would be a good idea for them to do so. Do we see consistency um, in terms of the types of problems people may be recognizing or challenges they're facing um, and knowing that sometimes it's just the boss says go implement an MDM solution. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watch, so, this watch this video that Cindy put up, but are there consistent challenges that companies can sort of recognize in themselves? Sure, I like to think about three categories. Uh, we'll talk about business process, analytics and new introduction or data change in introduction. So let's talk about business process. If you're having business process failure because your master data isn't correct, it's taking too much rework, you have to do too many behind the scenes calls, it takes too much tribal knowledge, then you probably have a master data problem. So maybe you, your first time right. So the first time you get, you get a new customer into your system and you ship them product the first time, if that first time right is below where you want it to be, then that's, then that's a master data problem. Maybe you're shipping to the wrong place. Maybe the order is wrong. Maybe the shipping address or the billing address is wrong. So first time right is an example of a business process that kind of breaking down because of data. It's a good sign of a master data problem. The second one is analytics. I'm sure that uh, if you're listening to this, you're involved in or have heard of or somewhere in your organization, there's somebody doing data science, analytics, BI, predictive modeling. And those programs spend a lot more time getting the data that they can trust in a way that they can analyze and a lot less time analyzing it. So if your data science and analytics team are having a problem understanding or spending too much time massaging or prepping the data, uh, then that could be a sign that you have some uh, MDM work that you could do. And the third is maybe it just takes too long to do the physical processing of data, either onboarding a new customer, getting a new product in, in, into your system, making changes or mass extensions. Maybe you, are manu you want to start manufacturing certain materials uh, or products in a new facility. And you've got to go and then extend or take all the data from one facility and kind of copy it over. If that process is too long or too arduous or too painful, then master data management can really help with that. So again, process interruptions or painful processes, analytics and BI team spending too much time finding and massaging master data, or just taking too long to get data in and changed in your transactional systems. Those are the kind of the three big pillars that, that I see of why people embark on and how they generate the real benefits from an MDM implementation. Right, right. Um, yeah, that's a really interesting. I, mean, I would imagine that inside of that, you're, you're, you're alluding to some you know, some horizontal processes or overall business um, business efforts that take place inside yeah. of an organizations. Um, do we see, uh, you know, to follow up on the challenges concept, do we see certain types of project types that businesses look into? Or is it horizontal business processes that is a common starting point for the type of low hanging fruit that businesses might undertake 
to um, uh, to sort of see those benefits inside an MDM? Project? Yeah, we really see two implementation styles of MDM, either object-based or process-based. Now, if you were to ask me all things being equal, I would, I would recommend process-based. So by process-based, I mean your procure-to-pay process, as an example, your order-to-cash right. process. Regardless of systems or how many systems you're running, if you're going to buy raw materials and then pay those suppliers, you've got a business process where you put the requisition out, invoice, all that stuff. So you can look at your master data from a process centric point of view or a business outcomes point of view. And that'd be my recommendation if I had to go choose. And you look at your business process and then you analyze what master data elements live within that process. And that's where you start to put the effort. That's more of a business process issue or a uh, data entry issue. Those are th those two pillars. If, however, maybe you want to take a um, kind of data object view of of the world. Maybe you want to get your customer file correct, customer data correct, or your supplier data uh, correct. So that is more uh, depth within one domain, as opposed to business process where you're going to have to cross multiple domains. Now the City Knowledge Platform can, can do both, and I think that's part of the agility I was talking about earlier. Maybe you want to have both running at a particular time. So for customers, you just want to go deep in the customer domain. But for your supply chain, you want to go across object, right? Where you're going to have some warehouse data, some product data, some raw materials data, some uh, procuring data, some invoicing, some requisitions, some shipping, all that stuff, you know, kind of cross object or kind of deep. So uh, what good news is you don't have to choose one or, or the other. It's really about, you know, where you need, where you're feeling the pain and, and solve the problem. Right, identify some problems and then start tackling them. Yeah. With the master data, you need to be able to do that. These are sometimes you know, relatively large projects. It's not gonna happen with one person sitting in a room by themselves sort of defining what all these things are and being, hey, I think these should be our master data uh, you know, definitions and, and rules and uh, implementing them in a vacuum. So let's talk a little bit about the users that need to be involved in an MDM project. Um, and also the types of users that the Synergy Knowledge Platform is, is sort of geared up to be able to support. Um, can you walk us through the types of users that generally get involved in an MDM project, who they are, the types of roles they may have, things along those lines at the top level? Yeah, so let's talk about ideal, right? In an ideal world, you have a, a data-driven company who has uh, leaders that understand that a data strategy supports a business strategy, and a data strategy is, is set up with drivers throughout the business and data stewards and really, really a data culture. And in there you have governance councils over domain that are cross functional and then they flow down through the rule definition and the understanding via metadata, the decisions that need to be made that then drive down to the technical team. Now in reality, what we see most of the time, right, is right. you have business experts, be those data stewards, subject, matter experts, functional experts, people that know what the business process needs to do or what the analytics need to go look like and how the process runs today. Then there is the kind of the MDM team that takes those goals or requirements and translates them into those business rules, those workflows, those data flows, and then involves those stewards and those subject matter experts in the initial process, right? So there's iteration there. And then ideally you reach out into the business community, but only reaching out to the business community in a way that empowers people and only involves them when they need to know it. So for those of you that don't know, I live in Atlanta, Kevin is up in Boston. And so I would only want to see data around Atlanta or Georgia. And Kevin would only want to see data or be asked questions around uh, Massachusetts, right? Or Boston in information. So the farther you reach out, right? The more specialized and targeted. Uh, if you think about what organizations want to do in general, is they want to treat their customers um, like an individual person. That's the overall market trend out in the world. What I challenge MDM teams is treat your end business users as individuals, as customers. What do they want? What do they need to be successful? So if your business user is kind of in the node edge, you have your data steward, your data team, and then you have your master data team. And in the ideal, sometimes this happens before, sometimes during, sometimes after, all of that flows up to an overall kind of governance council or governing organizations of the business rules and the strategy of the business are met and aligned. So the MDM implementation develops to be part of an overall data strategy. 
and those kind of personas from the executives, the strategy setters, the governance team on down and out are all the different personas or people that we try to code for uh, in the Sydney Knowledge Platform. Right, and provide them sort of a unique view that's gonna meet them where they're at, right? And what exactly. they need to be able to agree to and, and sort of sign off on and, uh, you know, from a technical person out to that sort of business owner and decision maker. Um, let's finish up by talking a little bit about the benefits of MDM. Um, you know, as I said earlier, sometimes people can think about master data management as an amorphous concept, um, but it's incredibly powerful. So let's talk a little bit about the types of benefits that businesses often recognize from, uh, from an MDM perspective once they've started putting it in place, whether it's across that business process or deeper down into an object. Um, you know, let's talk about the kinds of benefits that they, they often see. Yeah. I mean, at the highest level, make more money, save more money, stay out of jail. Those but let's go things. down one level, right? Um, you're going to make more money because you'll have more business agility, right? The ability to go from company ideation of some new market, some new product, some new initiative to doing it nowadays means you got to align a bunch of computer systems to make it work, right? You got to have transactions running differently, analytics running differently, and not having to worry about the data in between there, having data that can be reactive, right, is, allows you to make more money sooner. You're going to save money through less scrap, less rework, less business process interruption, and better analytics on top of the whole thing, right? So you save money by not wasting time, by not doing things in, inefficiently, not getting bogged down in manual processes, dealing with duplicates, and having to do ad hoc one-off solutions. And you're going to remain compliant by being sure the right people touch the right data at the right time with the proper traceability and auditability throughout the process. Now, what that means for an individual business could be better working capital impact to the P&L, a decrease in cost of goods sold. Uh, it could be new insights coming out of their uh, AI and machine learning in investments. It could be just faster time to market if you're in more of a commodity business and you have market windows that you need to hit. So by industry, by line of business, it varies dramatically how you get there. But we have seen time and time again that a, that a good data strategy supported by master data management will help you make more money, save more money, and remain compliant. Well, getting towards that, that, uh, that you know, golden ticket of, uh, of trustworthy data makes all the difference for businesses. We've seen it time and again. So... Tyler, this has been great. I really appreciate your time today. Master data management is you know, rapidly growing and becoming more and more important as a core competency inside of organizations. So I appreciate your, uh, your overview today. I think this was really insightful and uh, hopefully we'll do another one of these again soon. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. I appreciate the time. Thanks, buddy.